Welcome, my friends. If you have two functions, there are four main ways that they can be combined. You could either add, subtract, multiply, or divide the functions. And each of these four options is considered a type of combination of functions. For example, let's say we have the functions f of x is equal to 2x squared and g of x is equal to x plus 5. The way we represent the addition of these two functions is f plus g of x. All this means is that we need to add the two functions together so that f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. That means f plus g of x must be equal to 2x squared plus x plus 5. If we wanted to subtract function g from function f, that would be represented by f minus g of x. This is the same thing as f of x minus g of x. In our example, this is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 5. We need to use parentheses as we are subtracting the entire function g of x. We get 2x squared minus x minus 5 as our answer. We can also multiply functions, which is represented by f times g of x. This is the same thing as f of x times g of x. In our example, this is equal to 2x squared multiplied by x plus 5 in parentheses. Distributing, this simplifies to 2x to the third power plus 10x squared. Division of the functions is represented by f divided by g of x, and is the same thing as f of x divided by g of x. In our example, this is equal to 2x squared divided by x plus 5. You could be asked to evaluate one of these function combinations, which might look something like f times g of 2. This just means plug in 2 into your f times g of x function, which we found earlier to be 2x to the third plus 10x squared. When we plug 2 in, we get 2 times 2 to the third power plus 10 times 2 squared, which simplifies to 2 times 8 plus 10 times 4, or 16 plus 40, which is equal to 56. An alternative way to evaluate f times g of 2, which you might use if you didn't already have the functions multiplied, is to find f of 2 and g of 2 and then multiply them together. f of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 squared, and g of 2 is equal to 2 plus 5. This simplifies to 2 times 4 times 7, which is equal to 56. The same answer we got when we plugged into f times g of 2. It's important to pay attention to the impact combining functions has on the domain of the combined function. Let's say f of x has a domain a and g of x has a domain b. Then the domain of f plus g, f minus g, and f times g is the intersection of the domain of f of x and g of x, or a intersect b. The intersection of the domain is just a fancy way of saying that the domain of the combined function is the domain that is common to both functions. In other words, the domain can only get more restrictive in the combination function. If you are dividing functions, you have the additional restriction that the function on the bottom cannot equal zero, so as to avoid the divide by zero error. We represent this by saying that the domain is a intersect b minus x such that the function on the denominator is equal to zero. Let's look at an example. Say that we have the functions f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 6 and g of x is equal to x minus 4. Let's find the four combination functions, f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, as well as the domain of each combined function. Let's begin by finding each function combination. f plus g of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 6 plus x minus 4 f minus g of x is the square root of 2x plus 6 minus x minus 4, all in parentheses, since we need to subtract the entire function, which leaves us with the square root of 2x plus 6 minus x plus 4. For f times g of x, we have the square root of 2x plus 6 times x minus 4, again in parentheses. We can't really do much to simplify this one. For f divided by g of x, we have the square root of 2x plus 6 divided by x minus 4. Next, let's find the domain of each combination function. To do that, we need to know the domain of the given functions f of x and g of x. 
the inside of the square root must be positive in f of x to avoid taking the square root of a negative number, which is not defined over real numbers. We have 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Solving for x, we subtract 6 from both sides to get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Dividing each side by 2, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3, which is the domain of f of x. This can be expressed in interval notation as open bracket negative 3 comma infinity close parentheses. We use a bracket as we are including the value negative 3, and we always use parentheses for infinities using interval notation. For g of x, we don't have anything that will restrict the function, so the domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. Now recall that for adding, subtracting, or dividing functions, the domain is just the domain that is common to both functions. Another way to think about the domain of the combination is that it will be what is the most restrictive from the two domains. g of x contains all real numbers in its domain, so that is clearly not restrictive at all. f of x is restricted to only values greater than or equal to negative 3, so the domain common to both functions is x is greater than or equal to negative 3, or bracket negative 3 comma infinity parentheses. This is the domain that is common to both f of x and g of x, and is therefore the domain of the addition, subtraction, and multiplication of the functions. For f divided by g of x, we have the additional restriction that g of x could not equal 0, as that would cause a divide by 0 error. The denominator will equal 0 when x is equal to 4, so that means x cannot equal 4 in the domain of f divided by g of x. So we really have two restrictions. The restriction we had in the other three combination functions of x being greater than or equal to negative 3, in addition to x not being able to be equal to 4. The way we write this in interval notation is open bracket negative 3 comma 4, close parentheses to indicate that we cannot include the value 4, union parentheses 4 comma infinity, close parentheses. Alright my friends, that completes our video relating to combinations of functions.